Hey everybody and welcome to the channel, I am Viceroy and today we're playing Blockbuster Inc. Um, this is the prologue of Blockbuster Inc because it's not actually been released yet, but have you ever wanted to uh, have your own movie studio? Well, now's your chance. This game sort of reminds me of a movie tycoon that I used to play back in the day, used to love playing that, so um, let's see what this one's all about, shall we? So, new game, I've never played this before so I have no idea what to expect. Let's go with a, a random name, Aurora Pictures, it sounds decent. Um, we'll go with easy difficulty because, no reasons. Genres, okay, so we get to pick genres that we start off with, I'm guessing. Action, romance, comedy, mystery. Action, mystery. Hmm, and themes, vampire, ooh, cyberpunk, and alien. Yeah, sure. I mean, action, mystery, comedy. Oh, action, comedy. I think that's a good good combination. Proceed. Yes, we would like to play the tutorial because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Welcome to Blockbuster Inc. Let's go over the basic controls needed to play. Click the continue button. To exit the tutorial at any time, press escape and choose exit tutorial in the pause menu. Move the mouse while holding the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, we had to do like a full 360. Move the mouse while holding down the right mouse button to pan the view. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. The most essential information is always visible in the main view. Let's go over some of it. This section shows your current funds, released products, studio fans, and employee count. So we have $200,000, we have no products, we have no fans, and we have no employees. This number shows your current ranking amongst other studios. The stars indicate your studio's prestige. Okay. We'll describe all these stats in depth in the subsequent tutorials. Okay, this section shows the in-game date and time. Note that one day corresponds to one month. Okay, click this button to pause and pause the game. Click this button to change the game speed. Each press cycles between normal, fast, and very fast. You can also use the one, two, three keys. Tutorial completed. Build mode. Let's begin by going into build mode. Click this button or press tab. Tab. Select the wall rectangle tool. Left click and drag on the ground to create a room. Feels like a good sized room. From indoors, doors, choose any door and add it to the room. Indoors, doors, door. Okay. Let's turn this room into a produ producer office. Click indoors, objects, producer office. Indoors, objects, producer office. And add all four shown items into the room. Okay, so we need a desk for our producer. We need a small cabinet. We need a tall cabinet. And a notice board. What are we rotating? Ah, there we go. Good job. Let's make a writer's office too. Select the wall rectangle tool again. We can drag to create another room. Maybe not as big this time then. Like if we go from there and make it like... Oh, do they not connect? Ah. So indoors, doors, door. And then go there. From indoors, objects, writer office. Indoors, objects, writer office. And then add all four things again. So you need a desk, a small cabinet, a large cabinet, and a notebook. Which we will lovingly place there. 
we will need a maintenance room too, but we'll use a pre-made room this time. From indoors, pre-made rooms, and maintenance and place it in the lot. Maintenance, right for office, produce for office. Okay, I've probably made these offices like way too big. Uh, canteen, research, maintenance. We just like we rotate that and then do There we go. Great, let's add a canteen too. From indoors, pre-made rooms, choose canteen and place it in the lot. Canteen. That's a decent size. So let's place that and feeding here. Certain room types, for example the lounge, are currently locked. You can unlock them through research. See relevant tutorial. Another useful tool is the clone tool. Select it to try it now. Click and drag around on the ground to select the entire producer's office you created. Click on free space to place the copy part. Okay. You press QE to rotate. Now for the fun of it, let's turn this room into a toilet. Choose the bludgeon tool. Bludgeon. And click on uh, all objects inside the color copied room to delete them. Click, 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 click. Now add all the objects from indoors objects toilet. Indoors objects toilet. So you have, this is a very large toilet and then you'll have like three cubicles and like three sinks. Okay, we can't add any more. All the essential facilities are ready. Time to prepare for the actual production. Click the sets button. Choose any set and place it on the lot. So we only got one set, so uh, let's just place that somewhere. I feel here is probably a good place. Finally, let's confirm our changes and exit build mode. Or imagine clicking X and you just like undid everything you just did. Uh, employees. Oh, okay, it's just just then and then everything we did anyway. Righty, and time to hire some employees. Click the hire button. Here you can hire various types of employees. You can unlock more types by performing research. See relevant tutorial. Start by hiring an actor. So Nelson Sullivan, 31, whose salary is $2,515. They have good charisma, and they're athletic, and they're a perfectionist. And they're a nobody. <laughs> Charming. The window that appears on the left shows info on your new employee. Let's have a quick look. The top part shows name, fame level, and a preview of the employee. Okay. So fame level, nobody. The middle part shows happiness level, skill levels, traits, and salary. If an employee's happiness is low, hover your mouse over the happiness bar to view the reasons. No issues affecting happiness. Awesome. The bottom part includes tabs for past experience, relationships, and needs. Click the Needs tab. Food. Here you see the employee's needs levels. No needs will deteriorate your employee's performance and happiness. We don't want that. Sleep, hunger, bladder, and social. So low needs are shown as a pop-up icon over the employees. Let's continue hiring employees. Hire a producer. So we got Jerome Blevins, who's 30, who's on $2,342. They have Forever Famous, so once reaching the maximum level of fame, they never level down. Ooh. So he's a good producer. And they're logical, and so they're nobody, but they have lots of fame. Forever begins work tomorrow. Producers need to be assigned to a producer office to work. If you have already built one, when you hire them, they will be auto-assigned to it. Awesome, will we... We have one, so they must be auto assigned. Let's verify that the new producer was assigned. Click on the production office. Switch to build mode to modify the employee slots. In the employee slot info, you should see the new producer. When in build mode, you can modify the assigned employees. Let's move on. Hire a writer. They will be assigned to a writer office. Hire. Okay, that was automatic. Hire a director. Directors don't get assigned to any office, but they are called on set when filming begins. So we got Clement Love, who's 39, $1,970. They're a nobody, and they have 44 logic. Hire a crew person. They're in charge of camera shooting and other tasks while filming. So we got Clement Holder, who's 22, who's on $1,800, and they got 36 technical. Don't know if that's a good thing. I guess we'll find out. Hire a maintenance worker. They're in charge of keeping the facilities operational. So we got 
uh, Margar Ma Margarito Pratt, who's 20. So how is a maintenance person getting paid more than the director? Who's got 58 technical. Find me, hire a staff worker for the canteen. Canteens and lounges need a staff worker to be functional. So we got Zachary Robbins, who's 34, who's going to get paid $2,327. But they got their Gregarius, so that's good. That's enough for now. Close the Hire Employees window. Now, click the Manage Employees button. In this window, you can view the employees currently working for you. You can filter by type using this drop-down button. This section shows the name, age, happiness, and salary of each employee. This section contains available actions for this employee, such as fire the employee or negotiate their salary. This image shows a photo and type icon of the employee. You can hover your mouse over the type icon to see the employee's name, or the type's name even. Click the photo to quick select the employee. If this employee is currently away from studio, a car icon will be displayed over the photo. Also, if the employee is in education slash training, a university thingy-mobob icon will be shown over the photo. <laughs> Next tutorial, schedule. Oh, it's all our buildings gone. We'll need to set up our daily schedule. Click the schedule button. In this window, you can define the activities done per hour of the day. You can also choose the quality of the food served in the canteen. Okay. Let's assign the working hours. Click the work button. Work. Click on at least eight hour slots to turn them into work slots. You can click and drag to quickly select a range. So if we start work at eight and then work through till, see, oops, got too far, <laughs> four, eight till four. During work hours, all filming and productive work takes place. However, too many work hours will make your employees exhausted and unhappy. Let's set the leave hours. During these, your employees return home and replenish all their needs. Click the leave button. Click on at least an eight hour slots to return them to leave slots. Okay, so if you go there to there. If you have a staffed canteen, your employees will visit it during eight hours to replenish their hunger without having to return home. So two hours for eating. Finally, if you have a staff lounge, employees will visit during leisure hours. During them, your employees can hang out and restore their social need. Like talking! Employees will also randomly chat with each other, regardless of schedule, which restores their social needs slightly. This usually increases their relationship levels as well, but not always. Some people just don't get along. Tutorial complete. We didn't add any leisure time. There we go. Product creation. This is where the big things happen. Let's dive into the basics of making a product. Click the product creation button. Here we'll need to set up all the product details. The first thing to decide is the name, or you can have a random one pick for you. Next, you have various sub menus with options. The script writing menu will be initially selected. Click the product type and set it to movie. Movie. Oh, you can make TV shows too, that's cool. For the product size, choose low. This affects the production cost and the expected hyphen profits. Low. Choose a genre. The selected genre affects the audience ages and the ideal genre slider values. We're gonna go for, okay, I guess we're going for adventure. <laughs> choose a theme. Your product will turn out better if you use a filming set that matches the selected theme. Medieval. Choose an age focus. This should be appropriate for the selected genre. I mean, P general audiences, because there's nothing like adult or true childish about that, I guess. Click on the producer field and choose your current producer. Helen Perry. Sign your director, Pedro Chandler. And finally, choose your writer. You can select up to two writers to work together, but one is enough for now. Nicholas Stanton, congratulations. You should also customize the various genre sliders in a way that fits the show chosen genre. But let's leave them as is for now. I suppose like in an adventure medieval movie, you wouldn't have 
a lot of gore, like you'd have some. There'd be some conflict, maybe not so much atmosphere. Story, yeah, lore, yeah. You should now see a green check mark in the script writing button. This means that it's required details have been completed. All the sub menus must be checked in order to create the product. Click the actors button. Assign the actor who will be starring in the product. Randolph McConnell. Congratulations, Randolph. Select the scenes and sets button. Choose a set. Here you can plan the scenes and the sets on which they will be filmed. But only have one scene for this product. Click choose set and select your set. Note, avoid using the same set often. It decreases its novelty. Movie set. You can see the starting expenses and expected hype for this product in this section. So it's going to cost us about $50,000 to make and a base hype of 100. Nice. Click the create product button to finalize the product. If there are any issues, you will see a relevant warning next to this button. Make the movie. Your employees will arrive soon. You can speed up time until then. Yay, here we go. Now we're getting to work. The producer and writers should now head into their offices and begin work on the script. Wait until they are done. And done. <laughs> Moving on to filming. Your director, actors and crew should head to the filming set and film the needed scenes. Wait until they are done. This is going to be a class production. Look at the acting skill. Look at the backdrop. It's going to be glorious. The Desperate Killer, Adventure Medieval. Filming scene two of four. You now have the minimum needed scene takes. Let's see how we did. Click the info button on the progress widget. Okay, so overall shooting rating 35%. Here you can see the total scenes needed and the overall shooting rating quality of takes. You can also see specific info for each scene by clicking on this button. Continue. For the selected scene, you can see the current rating, quality of the best take so far, 35%. I mean, that doesn't seem amazing. The first takes are usually not the best, so it's a good idea to do more takes. Click the reshoot button. Wait for the new take to be completed. You can speed up time until then. Back to work, everybody. Do it again. It needs to be better. It needs to be passionate. If the latest takes rating was better, it will be reflected on the scene's rating. If not, the scene rating will stay the same. 39% is so a little bit better. That's enough for now. Let's finish filming. The movie is ready to be released. Click the release product button. Do, 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 do. Your new movie is set for release tomorrow. Let's wait and see how it goes. You can speed up time. How will the desperate killer do? Will we be in for fame and fortune? We have. We have seven employees. We have one product. We have no fans yet. And we still have some money. Is everybody walking around with nothing to do? I feel like we should be working on another film. There's like... They, they need work and just like while we finish the last production and everybody's hyped to see the new movie we've just brought out because it's going to be amazing i'm sure we should be working on the next one right the next best thing the next big thing to get our place on the hollywood walk of fame los rico's times the desperate killer beautiful premise excellent idea all butchered by my company's crew the promising concept is buried under so many mistakes, it's barely watchable. The film would reporter. And action. Didn't say anything. And director's cat weekly. If you want a good idea to fail, just hire Pedro Chandler. <laughs> You'll turn any gem into pure coal. 39 rating. Often fun, but profoundly bad. Ah. The movie has been released and the first reviews by critics have just come in. They're usually harsh on small studios and films, but don't let them scare you. With enough work, your studio will rise to the top. And we shall. You can view more detailed analysis of your product score. Click Show Score Breakdown. Okay, the left window contains a breakdown of the factors that determine the result score. 
who can click each scene in product scenes to see its own influence to the result. Okay, so technical was very poor by the scenes of it. Um, filming set theme. It was a bit boring. It could do with an upgrade. The right window details the various costs and other outcomes of the product release, such as the changes in fame and happiness for the involved employees. So Randolph, because of the bad review, became angry. Um, Pedro also became a little angry. Even though he was named personally, he didn't get as annoyed as this guy. And Helen got a little bit angrier. And Nicholas Stanton also got a bit angry. So it cost us $59.1,000 to make. It took us a month to record. I mean, we released an entire movie in a month. That's not bad, right? <laughs> Product type 39. So yeah, we didn't have any lights, microphones, practical effects, pro to This is why, like, it was very poor. It was very sort of, like, budget. Very unprofessional continue to resume the game this widget allows you to monitor the product's performance until it gets retired you can click on the top part to expand and collapse it ah yeah okay so it's made 12k so far rank 11 the bar chart shows the product's earnings per month of your mouse on each bar to see the exact amount the bottom row shows the total profit cost spans and height so, okay, so it's made 71k in the first month. We've made 12k profit so far. We haven't gained any fans and the hype is still exactly the same as it was when it released. Click this button to see a list of your products. Click on a product to open its information sheet. Uh, this sheet displays various information on your product. You can also use these buttons to watch the product or view its reviews. We can watch the movie. Oh, we can. My company presents The Desperate Killer, starring Randolph McConnell. It's a silent movie, apparently. The end. <laughs> wow, okay. Like, literally nothing happens. He just sort of, like... Starring Randolph McConnell and just shrugs. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, that's why the movie didn't do amazing. Fair play. <laughs> oh dear. Play next tutorial, direct scenes, and watch products. When creating a product, you can customize each scene to your liking. Let's try that. Click on product creation. Go to the scenes and sets tab. Direct scenes. And then here you can preview the scene. You can navigate the view in the same way as the normal game view. Type panning using WASD, blah, 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 blah. Tutorial. Click on this button to reset the view after moving it. Okay. Left click and hold on the actor in the 3D view to begin moving them. Meow. Click on, a, uh, click on a new position on which to place the actor or right click to cancel. This selection shows the product's actors that are currently in the scene. Click on an actor's photo to remove them from the scene. This section shows the available actors that are not in the scene. Click the actor that you removed to re-add them. Let's explore more options. Go to the animations tab. Here you can see available animations. First click on an actor in the 3D view to select them. Then click on an animation to use this. Ah, okay, so you can choose like the pose and things they do. That's, that's cool. So it's not a zombie movie, so we'll avoid that. Anything medieval-y? Um, cyberpunk spin attack. Meow. <laughs> now go to the costumes tab. Hang on, I don't wanna, I don't wanna sit with that. Um, I don't wanna stay with that even. Military crouching dying. Well, that wouldn't be very good if the entire movie is just our main character dying in Slash for Attack 360. I mean, that looked quite cool. Okay, costumes. Same as before, with an actor selected, click on a costume to use. I feel like medieval probably suits the med uh, medieval genre. Quite a few to choose from, though. Western, slash, uh, post-apocalyptic, so like a fallout thing, space. Superhero. Out of place in a myth, uh, medieval movie, though. Alien researcher, stuntman, actor left. 
To use these effects, you must have installed the relevant equipment on your filming set. Options that are not installed will appear grayed out. So we can do fog, fire, and rain. Click on one of the effects to use. Wow, that was good. I like the fire. I like the fire. Camera movement. While you're in this tab, the preview on the left will change to show the camera perspective. On this selection, section even, you can see the various options for the camera movement. Click an option to use it. Zoom in. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, our next movie is going to be amazing. This section lets you customize various parameters for the camera movement. They're different depending on the option you have chosen, so play around with them to get the result you want. That's all. Changes are auto-saved, so you can close the window. This check mark shows that you have customized this scene. Scenes that are left with the default options will not have a check mark. Curious to see the result of your work? Click the Create Product button. Now we wait. That looks so good. Wait until we get color cameras, they're looking bad. <laughs> the soldier and the diner. The diner, the dinner. Okay, how do we do? How did we do? Um, 39%. Oh, okay, it's not gonna let us reshoot. Okay, finish. Release product. Is it gonna do better than the first one? Click the product count to bring button to bring up your products. And watch. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Now you know how to bring out your creativity in every scene and what's the result. I mean, not the most interesting movie, granted, but it looks pretty cool. Stunts and doctors. Depending on the genre of products that you choose to film, you will often need to film stunt scenes in addition to normal scenes. Let's prepare for this. Click the Hire button. Hire a stuntman. Note that normally you need to unlock stuntmen and stunt facility in research before you can hire stuntmen. Also hire a doctor. It will come in handy later. Again, normally you need to unlock doctor office in research before you can hire doctors. Click on the product creation button. Go to scenes and sets. Direct scene. For this product, we'll only have a single stunt scene to film. Direct scene to set it up. For stunt scenes, you get to choose what kind of stunt you want to perform. Click the stunt tab. Each stunt has a specific number of involved persons and a specific chance of injury. Let's keep the default choice for now, but after this tutorial, you'll be able to choose any stunt. Nice. Actors tab. Here you can choose which of the product actors will participate in the stunt. You can also choose any of your stuntmen. Using your actors carries a risk of injuring them and delaying the filming, so let's use our stuntman instead. Remove your actor and add your stuntman. Larry Roca. That's enough setup for now. Close the window. Is the stunt is literally just falling over? <laughs> Click the click create product to begin production. Let's wait for filming to complete. We'll speed up time until then. The dark school bus, right? Screenplay and filming scene. This set is quite boring, isn't it, to be fair? And the entire film here, he just falls over, folks. Larry Roca has sustained an injury. They will be unable to work until February 1920 at 1415. The stunt scene was filmed, but the stuntman was injured in the process. Good news is that you have a doctor ready to help. The injured stuntman will head to the doctor's office to recuperate. The doctor will tend to the injured employees daily and speed up their recovery process. If you don't have a staff doctor office, or if it has no vacant beds available, injured employees will need to recover at home, which will take longer. Makes sense. You set equipment. Well, it sounds pretty interesting. The quality of your product scenes can be significantly improved by investing in the right set equipment. Let's see how to do this. Click the research button. 
So except for the most basic equipment, all other equipment has to be unlocked in research before you can use it. Go ahead and unlock the first camera upgrade. Ooh, the 1920 Pavilion Camera V2. Yes. Feel free to unlock any of the other options if you want. When ready, close the research window. So I have 1,900 research points. Let's get some nice lights. Um, and some microphone. Um, and we can't do it. We may as well just unlock, unlock everything <laughs> since we have the research points to do it. Can't unlock any of the tabs yet, but yeah, go for it. Let's see how we can use the upgrade that we have unlocked. Cl click the build mode button or press tab. Click on the set. Um, in this window, you can see the set size and theme. The scenes of your product get a quality bonus if the product theme is the same as the filming set theme. You can also see the set's prestige and novelty. The set's novelty affects the quality of the scene to film on it. Novelty is decreased when you release products filmed on this set and it restores over time. So try not to overuse the same sets. So it's at 100% at the moment, so we're good. The bottom section shows the equipment installed on this set. Click on the camera slot and upgrade to a better camera. We're gonna upgrade to the V3, because why wouldn't we? Adding or upgrading equipment comes with an expense, while removing or downgrading equipment yields a refund. Also note that you cannot change a set's equipment while filming is taking place on it. Makes sense. Upgrading set equipment boosts the quality of the film scenes and specific types of equipment provide other bonuses as well. For example, cameras provide better visuals and fire fog rain machines unlock the respective options in the direct scene menu. After releasing a product, you can see how the set equipment affected its quality in the product score breakdown window technical section. Right, that's good to know. So you can unlock like two cameras to use on the set. And then like a microphone, so we'd have like the V3 microphone, and then upgrade the lighting system to the best because why wouldn't we? Oh, you can see him materializing up here as well. Completely oblivious to that then, wasn't I? That's cool. Fame and friend. An actor of fame level one has just joined your studio. Famous actors bring a hype boost to your products, but they also have more expectations from you. More demands, in other words. <laughs> One expectation from famous actors is that you must provide accommodation for them. So let's rent a flat for this actor. Click the city view button. Ooh, that's cool. Ah, so it's like different areas. Right, to Filmwood. This is the overview of Los Ricos and its various districts. You can hover your mouse over each area to see brief information about it. Click on a house in Grid Row. It's the cheapest district in the city and perfect for level one fame actors. I'm guessing that's denoted by the star, because it's one star, it's two stars, three stars, four stars, and finally five stars. Pinnacle Hills. All hail the glorious community that only a select few can live in. The top of the star world, Pinnacle Hills, is where megastars separate themselves from mere mortals. But unfortunately, our app is going in Grid Row. <laughs> the poorest area in Los Ricos. It is the home to many wannabe stars that either just started their journey or will never make it to the top. Click on a house. Um, any house. This house. So, Grid Row. Fairly unknown. Two star. Mildred Curry, you now live in Grid Row. You can check an employee's housing status on their character sheet. Click on the Needs tab. Rented housing unit. This section shows the employee's current housing and rent. As employees gain fame, they'll require higher level housing, or they will quickly become unhappy. So they want at least level one, they have level one. $2,000 a month for rent, okay. This is why we like our actors, eh? Same goes with food quality. Famous employees will require higher quality food to justify their intricate, satisfy even their intricate tastes. To unlock higher food quality through research, explained in a later tutorial, and apply it from the schedule window. Medium and high quality food. On cost per employee, they're nice, okay. Finally, remember that only actors, producers, and directors have fame levels. Finances and loans. 
managing your finances is an important part in keeping your studio going. Let's see how you can keep track of them. Click the number showing your current funds to open the finances window. We have a lot of money, but maybe it doesn't, maybe it isn't a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. This section shows your income and expenses for the current month grouped into categories. So we have $180,000 made from movies. We have our expenses, so our salary, constructions, equipment. Okay. This field shows which month's data is currently displayed. You can change between months using arrow buttons. Click the left arrow to go to the previous month. We made $80,000 on movies, $10,000 salary expense, and $20,000 construction expense. This section shows the total income and expenses per month as bar charts. You can hover your mouse over the charts to see the exact amounts. Okay, it's handy to keep an eye on things to see how well we're doing. Click on a month's chart, we'll show them month's details on the left section. Click February. Hmm, quite intuitive. You can also switch between monthly and yearly data. Try clicking the yearly button. So far, so good. But what do you do when you are running short of money? Let's see how we can get bank loans. Click the bank icon. Click on loans. Take out loan. In this window, you can view your current loans and get new loans. Click the take out loan button. Here you can choose a loan amount and the number of installments. Choose any amount above 1,000 and click take loan. Okay. Loan installments will be paid automatically every month until the loan is paid off. If you run out of money in the meantime, the payments will be paused until you have enough money again. But at the expense of paying more interest, I'd imagine. But at 1%, that's pretty decent. You can have up to three active loans at any time. The credit limit shows the current amount of your loans and the maximum you can get. So you can loan up to $1 million. That is a hell of a credit limit. <laughs> Tutorial for research. Research is a powerful feature that lets you unlock all sorts of upgrades. Let's check it out. Click the research button. Here you can see all currently available research. Note that new research becomes available every few years. You'll see a notification whenever it happens. So yeah, as I imagine as time sort of ticks on, more technology is invented. You can then like unlock technology to use in your studio. The top row shows the available categories. Click the genres and themes button to see this category. Ah, nice. Okay, so this is how you unlock new genres. Each research slot costs research points to unlock. This number shows your current RP. Let's see how we can earn some. You already have a research office, but we also need researchers. Click the hire button. Hire a researcher. So Mercedes Lindsay, who's 20, you're now hired. Researchers only work during work hours. So let's set these up. Click the schedule button. Go to work and five hours. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Great. During these hours, the researcher will head into the office and work to produce RP. This takes time, so you may want to consider hiring multiple researchers to work in parallel. Let's check out the research window again. Click the research button. For the sake of the tutorial, we have instantly gained some RP. Well done. Well done, researcher, you've done well. Click on any research slot that you want and spend RP to unlock it. I want to unlock... What do I want to unlock? Cyberpunk. Yeah. Simple as that. Investing time and resources in research is a powerful way to get ahead of the opposition. Education and training. Quite an in-depth tutorial system in this game, fair play. Let's see how you can hone your employee skills and get the best out of them. Click the hire button. Hire an actor. Here you can see your new actor's skills. Actors have two types of skills, charisma, which affects their general acting performance, and athletic, which affects their performance in stunt scenes. So 47 and 66. Like, if they're out of 100, that seems to be a pretty good score. Apart from actors, all other employee types have only one skill. Also, charisma is the primary skill of actors, but other employee types have a different skill. Let's see how we can raise this actor's skills. Hire a teacher. Note that normally you need to unlock a classroom in research before you can hire teachers. Makes sense. Now we have a teacher and a classroom. 
So we are ready to educate our actor clip manager employees. Educate. Click on educate to bring up the education menu. Note that this button is also available in the character sheet. And so we're going to teach them charisma. Start. All set, the teacher and actor will head into the classroom and work on increasing the actor's charisma skill. You can speed up uh, time for this. It's good practice to educate your employees during their idle time, easy between productions for increased efficiency, educate, mu educate, educate multiple students simultaneously. So it, it's going up by one every time. Is it? I'm, I'm guessing it's just like a continuous thing until you stop it. That's enough for now. Click the stop button. Up, up, and nearly. Stop. <laughs> we previously mentioned that actors also have an athletic skill. So let's see how we can raise this. Click on the train button. Same as before, click the start button. Kick, punch, it's all in the mind. This at time, the actor will head into the stunt facility and train their athletic skill. Note that we don't need a teacher for this type of training. Oh, okay, so they just like a just gym, essentially. Okay. Also note that normally you need to unlock stuntmen and stunt facility in research before you can build a stunt facility. Tutorial completed. Okay. Right, okay. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. So this game is currently available for free on Steam, as it's the uh, the prologue to the main game, which uh, is out uh, next month, I believe. Hopefully, um, if you did enjoy this video, we'll we'll end it there because the tutorial was quite long, wasn't it? <laughs> but if you did enjoy the video and want to see more videos of this uh, game, please hit that like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and if you really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. It'd be very much appreciated. And until next time, moviegoers. Have fun, catch you later, and bye for now.